My name is Roderick Miller. I'm the President and CEO of the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Yeah, so a day for me is varied. There are a lot of things. I mean, the nature of economic development has changed tremendously over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, so whereas one time that was essentially always just pretty much working with companies trying to figure out how to get them to locate, which we still do that, it's a lot more than that now. I mean, yeah, there may be a company that I'm trying to figure out how to get a 20-acre site or 30-acre site uh, for them to do a manufacturing facility, but there could also be uh, uh, going to work on a major construction project and trying to figure out how to get a piece of relevant infrastructure built as our organization also is involved in that. Um, a lot of the workforce issues in a typical day may include calling companies to figure out how to help them find a solution, whether it's working with our, our um, workforce investment board or the community college to, ha to handle a training issue that they may have. And may go from there to, uh, to a board meeting or something like that to talk about governance and kind of how do we work better as an economic development ecosystem between our organization, which is a city organization, the state, and the region. So uh, uh, the work is varied, but it's always very, very interesting. Um, in our organization, we look at three big buckets uh, of work. One is uh, from a transactional perspective. We do a real estate and finance, so whether it's buying properties or trying to figure out how to leverage properties to get good deals done. We do business development, both selling uh, a property, uh, both uh, attracting companies as well as retaining and ex uh, retention expansion opportunities. And then we also focus on small business development. So we work with a lot of businesses across the city to help them grow and make our economy stronger. Well, ac across, across markets, what you find is that people are the, n the number one factor in making an economy strong. So talent drives investment decisions by companies. And I think the balancing act, uh, whether it's Detroit or whether it's Phoenix or whether it's New Orleans or whether it's Baton Rouge, is uh, trying to figure out how do you uh, position an economy so that the people that are there have optimum opportunities to better their quality of life, as well as making it an attractive place to attract new people. And that work has stayed the same everywhere. And, uh, but it, but the, the, the methods and the tools that are used to, to uh, uh, achieve results vary. What inspires me the most about economic development is that at the core of our work, it's about improving quality of life for people. And at the core of our work, it's about creating economic opportunities. And what we, what we see day in and day out is that there's so much despair, there's so many challenges, people are dealing with real life issues, but if we can, if we can spur an economy to create healthy, to create jobs that allow people to uh, take care of their families, that's a tremendous opportunity and tremendous uh, um, responsibility. Um, so that gets me really excited about the work that we do day in and day out, that we are actually impacting people on the ground, where they live and how they live. That's the beauty of economic development. Uh, whether it's uh, the 650 job deal we did two weeks ago with Flex and Gate, a tier one supplier to, for Ford, um, uh, uh, setting up new shop in Detroit that's going to provide quality jobs for Detroiters, which, you know, in Detroit we have 38 percent of adults in poverty, 58 percent of kids in poverty, and when we can uh, spur new development that allows uh, people to move off of the poverty rolls into to new opportunities and work with workforce training providers to make sure that people are actually able to move into those jobs. That's tremendous success. One of the things that was interesting was when I, I early on in economic development, I was at the Greater Phoenix Economic uh, Council. We got to work on uh, Intel's, one of their last uh, plants, coming in a $3 billion deal, trying to get that uh, located into, into the Phoenix market. That was also a very exciting project because it created thousands of of new jobs in the marketplace. Or I can think about when I was in the city of Glendale working on a major deal with Honeywell uh, for them to expand their facilities there in Glendale. Or in New Orleans, we worked on a lot of different things. And a lot of times we don't even like to talk about retail because most of the times those aren't quality jobs. But in a city where you've got a lot of poverty, Costco came in and paid $23 an hour for retail jobs. Those were tremendous asset to the community, and especially a community that lacked basic uh, retail uh, support. So across the board, whether it's Detroit or whether it's New Orleans, whether it's Phoenix, whether it's Baton Rouge, um, economic development uh, has to meet communities where they are, really understand what the needs of the community are, and try to spur um, opportunities that really allow those communities to be the best communities that they can be. You know, when I moved to Detroit, moved to Detroit about two years ago, I didn't know much about Detroit, and I talked to my board, I talked to uh, a lot of the people on the ground and folks said, Rod, you can live anywhere. You don't have to live in this city. Uh, even though you're in the, moving into this job, you can live anywhere. You really need to figure out what's the best place for you to live. And as I assessed options, 
the city had a lot of things that were attractive and they had one thing that was a major detractor, which was the schools. But, but when I moved into the community, when I decided to move into the community of, Detro of Detroit, I was like, if I'm gonna take that job, I have to live in the city. And, and what it did, it, it, it showed the community that I wasn't just there to be a part of the, the recovery or to help people per se, but that I was a part of the community. That was absolutely essential in establishing trust. That was absolutely essential in showing that I was committed to the work more than just, uh, it was, it's more than just a job to me. Uh, my living in the community allows me to really understand the, the issues, the good, the bad, and the ugly firsthand. Um, so I think it's very important for economic developers to live in the communities where they work. The IEDC is a tremendous organization. When I got started uh, in economic development in the early 2000s, IEDC looked very different than it does today. But I would say the IEDC has been a tremendous um, support in so many ways. Uh, the cohort uh, or the, uh, the collegial nature, the brotherhood, the fraternity that it is, it allows me to connect with other developers across the country, uh, some in similar markets, some in markets that are very different, learn from their experiences, um, share my experiences with them. It, it creates a brain trust that's really been uh, vital in allowing me to navigate uh, the realities of different markets. Uh, the IEDC has uh, been not just a, a group that's a professional network, but it's become a network of friends. So the, the, it's a completely, the job is a completely different job. When I started in economic development, it was all about jobs and investments. So, so we would say, you know, so if you had a good year, you'd be like, yeah, in my community last year, we did 4,000 jobs or 5,000 jobs, and the average wage was $80,000 a year. So that was a winning. And it's become a, a much more complex scenario. Economic developers are now being asked to solve bigger social issues because the underlying challenge of these communities is, uh, is economics. So it's not just about chasing jobs day in and day out, it's about creating economic sustainability. It's about supporting companies in ways that allow these companies to be viable and competitive in a new age of, of globalization in a way that they've never been before. It's about plugging into workforce development issues in a very thoughtful manner. It's about understanding how infrastructure impacts the ability of an economy to be successful over time. So. Uh, when I started in economic development, I would say it was, it was challenging, but it was a much more simple uh, uh, value that, that economic developers were expected to add. Whereas today, we're expected to connect the dots and really uh, increase quality of life, not just uh, in theory, but in reality. I try to look at whether or not we are shrinking the gap the income gap between the have and the have nots. That's a very clear metric because at the end of the day, if you just grow jobs on the high end of the spectrum, that really just creates uh, more, more challenges for those on the bottom end of the spectrum. So really trying to make sure that we grow jobs uh, and grow opportunities for everybody. Another way that we look at that is, you know, we can look at unemployment and, and employment figures over time, how those are Im impacted. We can look at labor participation. As you start to uh, segment data, you find very, very interesting things. I mean. 4.4 percent, 5.5 percent unemployment rate nationally, 4.4 percent for, for white Americans, 6.5 percent for Hispanic Americans, 9.9 percent .9 for African Americans. And as you segment the data for, further, you find that between the ages of 16 and 20, uh, about 25 percent of, uh, of uh, African American uh, youth are unemployed. And if you just look at males, it's about 40 percent. So really understanding the slivers of, of the demographics in your community and how those different um, pieces of the demographics are able to plug into the workforce are essential to um, establishing opportunities and going after jobs that would be relevant to the people that you serve. So for example, one of the things that we know is that um, for minorities and for women, they are much more likely to build long-term wealth through creating a business rather than having a job. And so, uh, and most economic developers do not enjoy doing small business work because small business work, it's just as much work as anything else that you're doing and most of the time, less return. Um, but one of the things we did in, in Detroit is we launched a small business division in the last couple of years because I realized that for a lot of our population, the quicker way to economic sustainability would be through launching their own businesses. So our Motor City Match program, we give out half a million dollars every quarter to small businesses in this, that, that want to be in the city of Detroit. And we provide the, and that's grant monies, but in addition to that, we provide assistance with business plans, uh, helping them identify what um, 
area of town they should be in negotiating leases. So we do that through our small business program. Through our D2D program, we have grown the spend from about $550 million between small and medium-sized businesses in the city and major companies from $550 million three years ago to $930 million today. Um, through our Green Grocer program, we've invested about 6 or $7 million in groceries uh, to, to solve the, the grocery uh, challenge of, uh, of the, city, the food desert challenge of the city. And it's leveraged over $30 million in private sector. So, for example, that's one way very directly to, to address it, to recognize that some folks might be better, uh, might have better opportunities through launching their own businesses. So, targeted programming. Another thing that we've done is we go into the, um, we work with the universities, we go into the schools, um, those sorts of things to try and find ways that we can partner very specifically to help people identify opportunities. And we work closely with businesses on a lot of these things. So, uh, the more direct answer to your question is that the problems are very specific and the only way that you solve the problem is by going all the way down at a very granular level and meeting with the folks that it impacts and understanding what they need to be successful. Economic development has changed a lot since I've been in this field the last 15 or so years. The reality is it's going to change a lot more. The keys to success are this. Number one, be principled, have integrity, be honest. Uh, number two, I would say is be a student of the field, be intellectually curious, read a book, read a lot of books, read a lot of articles about uh, trends that are happening globally, globally and trends that are happening locally and nationally. Number three I would say is don't be so um, ready to jump to find a new job. The beauty of economic development is that in most organizations there are a myriad of skills, there are a myriad of functions that are available. So learn as much as you can and if you have good leadership many times they will give you the opportunity to, to, to try different things whether it's being marketing uh, one year or maybe it's business development or maybe there may even be opportunities to, to run special programs for, for your organization. So try to uh, learn all that you can and get all that you can out of the organization that you're in before you look at going to other organizations. Number four I would say is that long term in this field a lot of times you do have to move around um, so be open to opportunities globally, be open to opportunities around the country uh, and, I, and I think there's no higher compliment that to than for a community to say, you know what, we like what you have and we need you to come here and help us solve our challenges. And last but not least, find good mentors. Um, people love to, to support up and coming talent. So try to identify people that have done things in their career or that you may want to do in your career or that you think can provide you with good advice. And, in, and I will promise you probably in nine out of 10 cases, they'll be very glad to help you out. I have had a lot of mentors in this field. Uh, and I would I would say you know it's it's interesting one of my one of my one of my mentors is as as Barry Broom who's now in Sacramento and Barry was interesting he was the second job that I had in economic development and Barry was a guy who was relentless who is relentless and it was a very very difficult to work for Barry I worked for Barry for about four and a half years um, it was difficult to work for him because he you could never win he always wanted more and that's one of the things that I really appreciated uh, from working for him for the time that I did because you never really know what you can do until you push yourself, push yourself, push yourself, and push yourself harder. So economic development is in a very interesting place because of course the, 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 the trend at least at the middle and the senior levels is increasingly older. But the reality is that we need to leverage tools in a very different kind of way. So this generation, I think the first one would be of course the use of social media. Whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the list goes on and on. Um, I don't think that we, have ec we as economic developers have optimized our use of these tools. Um, we're using them more and more, but I think um, over the next few years you're going to see very interesting uh, ways that these tools will be used like they have, that they haven't been used before. Another one of the things that's really, really interesting is of course you've got all of these database management systems, Salesforce and others, uh, smart sheets, and those systems are increasingly complex and increasingly capable of handling more and more information. So those are things that are very, very helpful as we, you know, as we look at doing our work. Uh, one of the other things that's really, really interesting is there's are a lot of uh, 
there are interactions that are happening with people, with clients, with communities in ways that they, we haven't had them. So leveraging uh, teleconferencing things to have meetings or Google Hangouts to, to bring 10, 15, 20 different uh, groups together. All of those sorts of things are really changing the nature of competition. So it's really, really exciting to see how, how, we, how we can plug into technology. I think there's been a very conscious, deliberate conversation, especially in the last few years, about the importance of diversity in the field. Um, as the country moves towards being a majority minority country, um, I think the importance of that practitioners represent the gamut of Americans is, uh, is vital. And I, I'm proud of the IDC for taking that discussion kind of head on and really focusing on trying to make sure that we've got a diverse uh, uh, group of practitioners, men, women, and from all over the country and from all kinds of backgrounds. So that's really, really exciting. I've also been really pleased um, that the IDC has responded to this question of equity, which is increasingly um, uh, a challenge in communities. We know that poverty you know, is, is one of those, is, is the worst thing, but we're, we're seeing that whether it's poverty in rural America or whether it's poverty in urban America, uh, we have less social mobility as a nation um, than we've ever had. And so the IDC being thoughtful about how to, how to make sure that we develop tools and approaches that allow people to uh, have upward mobility um, has really been encouraging. And on a personal level, you've mentioned a couple of projects, but what would you say is your, your biggest personal accomplishment? I would say my biggest personal accomplishment is um, being a part of the recovery of New Orleans. Uh, when I got to New Orleans, it, it was still kind of a questionable a little bit whether or not it was going to be able to pull out of the uh, out of the uh, the doldrums after Hurricane Katrina. But I, I felt like the work that we were able to do over the four years that I was there was absolutely essential in, in, in helping the city come back. That ranged from uh, projects like uh, G Capital, uh, moving to the market, uh, uh, to um, to bringing in the Costco, so it was the and everything in between. And so over the years that I was in New Orleans, we were really able to be thoughtful about uh, building a better future. And uh, uh, there was a strategic plan we developed called Prosperity NOLA, which really brought together you know hundreds of business, civic, and political leaders to chart out a plan uh, for the future. And what makes me excited about that is that everybody came together. And it wasn't about anyone's political agenda or social agenda. It was really about the future of the city. If I had to motivate my colleagues, this is what I would say, is that we are America. And our country is at a vital point where um, the opportunities um, are greater than they've ever been before. Um, we look at, you know, we've got the baby boomers that are, you know, that are retiring, we've got the millennials that are coming of age, and we've got an age of global competitiveness that we've never experienced before. Your work is more important now than it's ever been. As businesses try to squeeze more than 100 cents out of a dollar, uh, and, and, and that there is a massive kind of uh, undertaking in terms of trying to figure out how to uh, launch new enterprises, economic developers hold um, hold the tools that really will allow everyone to participate in our economic growth. So if you don't do it, no one will. So the bigger picture about the future is this. The bigger picture is that this age of global competitiveness has changed. When I, when I came, when I was growing up in the 80s, I mean, we really had two big structures you had. You know, you, either you were with the US or you were with the USSR. And kind of, and kind of communities fell on one side or they fell on the other. Uh, in this age of ubiquitous information through the internet, uh, young people in rural parts of India and Africa can get the same kinds of education via the internet that I got at Harvard University. What that means is that knowledge is expanding at a, a, a more rapid pace and people can compete that formerly couldn't compete. So gone are the days of just when being an American meant that you had a certain level of lifestyle and had a certain level of opportunity because everybody has an opportunity. The internet and information has become the great equalizer. In, that, in this age, we have to be very, very intentional about making sure that we are positioning ourselves as a nation and as communities to be who we want to be. 
And so I think the future is very, very bright. But it's what, what's going to be interesting is that we're going to be connected in ways that we haven't been connected before. Uh, looking at partnerships with, uh, with uh, foreign cities and foreign communities around different um, uh, buckets of work is going to be important. Uh, understanding how to attract talent and how to develop talent is going to be uh, more important as economic developers than it's ever been. Uh, the importance of place making, you know, the 20 make minute community where you've got, you know, access to jobs, access to amenities, access to health care. Those kind of concepts are really what are going to drive community sustainability into the future. So I think that those are the types of things that we have to look, look uh, ahead to. So it takes a few years. Um, I would say it, it varies depending on what kind of organization a person is in, how expansive the scope of that organization is, whether it's a regional organization, a state organization, uh, public-private partnership, all public, all private, or even at the, uh, even at the city level. Um, so in general, I think in a couple of years, and probably two years, one can probably gain the, the core elements needed probably to do what they need to do in their particular role and maybe in their particular organization. Um, but to really understand economic development, I think it's an ongoing process. No one has ever uh, got the complete body of knowledge around everything that economic developers need to know. But I would say in three to five years, if one is really focused, they should be able to gain the majority of the tools that they would need to be successful in this field.